I'm going to discuss the end of line sequence on the Windows in a bit more detail. I'm on Windows in the MCS2 system in the terminal, and this Git version is going to be configured with the auto conversion of the end of line sequence to false. We have another Git version, the Git for Windows, that operates on the Windows side. But that is what Visual Studio Code uses. And that version is configured with its option true. So let's see the status of the files. These four files have the Windows end of line sequence, and the make file had the Unix type end of line sequence. So let's now use the Git for Windows, initialize repository. Everything can be staged, so then you can go over here and state all changes. Commit message, commit. So this appears clean, change is zero, and none of the files show up as modified. But if I go over here and do a git status, then this git version thinks these files are modified. So why does git in the MC2 system thinks that this is modified? We can do a git diff on the file, and we can see it's that end of line sequence that is the issue. So let's go to the documentation of Git, and we can see here a discussion on the topic, including that core.autocrlf. So Git can handle auto conversion of Windows type end of lines to Unix type end of lines when you add a file to the index, meaning committing, and vice versa when it checks out code onto your file system, so within Git checkout. So this is the option then to set. Let's do that. And we can see the working tree is now clean. So that means your files are then in the Windows convention, and when you commit, it will be converted to the Unix end of line types. Also, when you check out, so let's test that. I'm going to remove everything except the dot git itself. So now we can get all the files back with a git checkout. And when we check the types of all the files, they're now all in the Windows convention. So also the make file has CRLF, the carriage turn line feed. So that means that all your files will be in the Windows convention, and when you commit, it will be converted. So when you publish on GitHub, everything will be in the Unix convention. So if a user then downloads from GitHub, the user also needs to set this option. So it would be easier if there would be a way that you can put it in a git file inside your project. And you can do that with the .git attribute file. So to show that, I'm first going to delete the git and set the option back to false. So let's start from scratch, but now inside the terminal of the MSYS2. So this option is false, meaning there's no auto conversion. All the files will be in the Windows convention, so when we commit inside Git, they will also be in the Windows convention. So let's do that. Git init. Git add dot. Do the git commit. Let's go over to GitHub. Create a repository. Going to make it private and create. Then we copy the two lines, the git remote add, and run it, and do the git push to push all the files to GitHub. It now uploads to GitHub. Let's go over to the Mac, git clone, go into the project. Do the find, see what all the types are, and they're all in the Windows convention. So let's now use that git attribute file. So what we're going to do is create a .git attribute file that's going to do the same thing. When you commit, it will translate or transform the files into the Unix convention. So we can create the .git attributes by echoing this line into it. 
So what this says is that all text files will be converted to the Unix format. Now we need to add the git attribute file to the index. So let's do a git add on the git attribute file. And now we need to recommit all the files to convert them into the Unix format. The way to do that is a git add, but use the dash dash renormalize on all the files, including the .git ignore and the git attribute file. So these now all are in the index. We can now commit. And do a git push. Let's go over to the Mac and do a git pull. After this step, all your files will be in the Unix convention. That means it's better to start off with creating first and dot .git attribute files, uh, but later on you can still convert everything to the Unix style. So what we could do is do a git log and check whether it only converted this part or whether it converted everything in, in your git. So let's do a git. Actually, let's do a git log and do a cut, so we have the commit number. So this is the commit number. So let's check out. Create a new branch and check out with this commit number. So we now switch to a new branch and we've only this commit. Let's check what all the types of the files are. And these are all in the Windows format, meaning Git did not change the history it only added a commit, which was the new Unix type. So let's go back to that branch. We're now back into this state and do the find again. And all files are in the Unix convention. So that means all these commits will still be in the Windows convention, but the new one has changed everything into the Unix type. Let's go back to the Windows. I'm going to remove all the files, including the git attributes and the git ignore, and get all the files back. So on checkout, you will see that all the files are in the Unix convention. So it convert files when you commit. And if you keep doing git checkout, you will get all the files unconverted back into the Unix format. Meaning all of these files will show you the LF. So once you do this, the third option would be to not use git attributes at all. It will be that all your files will always be in the Unix convention. So how about then when you create a new file? Well, you can switch that option on in the settings of Visual Studio Code. And let's see what the default is when you create a new file. So the default end of line character, it sets to auto, meaning it uses an operating specific end of line character. So if you have Visual Studio Code on the Unix, it will use the LF. And if you have it on the Windows, it will use the character turn line feed. So the solution is then set it to the Unix default. And when you create a new file, this file will be in the Unix convention. So then you store everything in the Unix convention, also on the Windows. And when you commit, you commit everything in the Unix convention. And also on GitHub, everything will be in that convention. So let's discuss what we've seen. We were on the Windows, we are here on the Windows side, and via Git we were connected to GitHub. And GitHub is connected to the outside world, so to other Mac, Linux and Windows users. Suppose we are on Mac and Linux, we create files of a native format, which is the line feed, the Unix type end of lines. And if you then commit and push to GitHub, this will be in the Unix convention. And if you do a Git clone, it will again be in the Unix convention. So this part is consistent. The question is, what should you do on the Windows? The default of Git for Windows is to have an automatic conversion. 
So once you commit, it will be converted into the Unix format. And then if you push it to GitHub and another user on the Windows will do a Git clone and has that option true, then it will automatically convert back to the carriage return line feed, which is that default on the Windows. So both Windows users need to have that option on. So this is the default option because some old software might require that everything is in that carriage return line feed convention. For example, batch scripts might require it. And I think the old notepad, even if you give it a line feed file, will always save it as a carriage return line feed. So that changes the files. So because of these reasons, this is the default. Now, more and more people point out that you shouldn't rely on people to have this correctly configured. It should be a uh, project setting. So for that, we can use the .git attribute file. We did it, we added that line in there. And what it did was it auto converted once you commit and publish to GitHub, it will be in the Unix convention. And what we also saw is when you do a git clone or check out, all your files will be in the line feed convention. So no conversion on git clone or git checkout. So basically we then are over here where everything on your windows is more or less in the Unix convention. So if you have most of your files like that, I would recommend to set the default of VS Code to create files of the Unix type and top line. We also saw that we added this .git attributes to Git. It did not alter the history. Only from the new commit onwards was everything in the line feed convention. Now two points. Even if you have a file stored by default in the line feed convention, you could still store some files in the carriage return line feed. So if you really need that, for example, batch files. So you add an option to that git attribute file where the extension bat is not converted. The end of line is the Windows type. So that means you have a mixture of files over here. You do a uh, git commit push. You have a mixture of files over there a git clone or a git pool. And these files will also be a mixture in the Mac and Linux. But that won't be an issue because these .bat files are not used on the Mac and Linux anyway, so no user will really need them. You can also list file types that you want or do not want to be converted. For example, you can list that a PNG file or a JPEG or an MP4 should not be converted, and it leaves only these text fi uh, files to be converted. And it's important because conversion could go wrong. So Git needs to detect whether it's a text file, and that is more difficult than just looking at extension. So one in a million times, for example, this might go wrong. If you have all your files in the line feed extension, the Unix convention, and you do a an commit and a push, why would you convert? It is not really needed. So option three is make sure that all your files and the Git database are in the Unix convention. Again, um, set VS Code that it uses the Unix type end of lines as a default, so that when you create a new file, it will be of the Unix convention. Now I must say that all the software that I know currently, like Vim and VS Code, will just honor the settings. So if it's the finds a line feed convention in your file, it will save it as a line feed. If it finds it's a DOS file, it will save it as a DOS file. Also utilities like Make and GCC can handle both type of files. There might be an edge case if you use unit test where you compare whole files. For example, a quantum package that outputs a file and you compare that file to a stored file. Then you might, then it might be more convenient to compare it to a certain format. So the overall goal is that you can collaborate and in a cross-platform way. The convention of using the Unix type is probably the best one. And this is the default, so I hope you understand the reasons for it. And more and more people are switching to using .git attributes. So this is the most flexible option of all of them. So if you get more experienced and have more files in your uh, project, you probably want to use this option.